All right, guys, let's just get cracking. I'm just gonna assume that you have read already the introductions to the game so that you are more or less at the same stage as I am. And we're just gonna go ahead and play a new game of Piggy. All right, we're not gonna make it complicated. We're just gonna play a standard game. We're gonna set up four, like three bots actually, and be ready for it. All right, and this up. Okay, the game is starting. Let me let me pause it for a second. So, when I start playing a new strategy game, I like to. Well, I'm usually pretty confused by the way it's running. I don't even know the interface yet. I know that these are the cards that I have. Uh, I have one spade, I have seven clubs, one diamond and one heart. This is pretty straightforward. I know the basic rules. There is a gold suit, there is the common suit. We probably want to figure out what is the common suit first so that we can figure out what is the gold suit and so that we can start accumulating cards from the gold suit. This is the, the basic mechanic of the game. This is what we're going to want to do. Um, but yeah, so probably like this part here is where we're going to do the betting and these are our adversaries that we must uh, destroy at this game, essentially. So all of this is all fine and well. I'm, I have two choices here. I can start playing with the very limited amount of knowledge that I have on this game and I'm probably going to get massacred pretty easily on this round. Or I can try to figure out like what's going on and I can play what I call randomly. I can basically just not play. <laughs> I can just like observe how people play and see if I can pick up on some, some patterns, some ideas, some, some, some first hints uh, to understand how the games, this game works. And that's more or less what I'm going to do. I have two choices. This is a trading game. So if I want to play randomly, I can either make pretty much no, no bets, just no, no, no trades. I'm just gonna let them do trades and see how they trade to see if I can kind of like link it to my understanding of the game. Or I can just start engaging in a bunch of random, you know, random trades. Um, it's not gonna be <laughs> that useful. We know that trading is about buying low and selling high. So if I just buy things randomly, I'm very likely gonna get murdered with no knowledge, no extra knowledge and understanding whatsoever. So the strategy that I'm going to go for in this first game that I play is just to essentially not play. I'm just not going to do any trade. I'm just going to see if I understand the basic mechanic of the game. And with that in mind, let's unpause the game for a second. All right. So, oh, wow. OK, let's pause. <laughs> OK, so here is a bunch of trades happening. I've got this one guy here, this is Bot Raccoon. Um, selling, no, wait. Yeah, so I've got uh, Bot Raccoon buying some spades. And I guess that if I click here, I can just sell my spades. Well, I don't have any of them. And I'm gonna stick to my strategy of not playing. So I'm not, I'm not gonna sell my uh, my very valuable spade here. Well, actually, I don't know whether it's valuable. Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna start reasoning about value of my cards in a second, but let's just like lay out the foundation first. So we can sell some spade here, we can sp uh, sell some spade there. No, we can sell some diamonds there, and we can buy uh, some of them. Why would I wanna sell or buy? Well, I have basically two indications as far as I understand it. I want to buy what I believe is the the target suit, the, the goal suit. I want to buy the goal suit, right? So that's what's inherently going to convey value to one suit or another. Um, I know that all of the other players want to do exactly the same. They all want to buy the common suit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they all want to buy the goal suit. So when I see that somebody is already offering to buy some spades, or when I see that somebody is already offering to buy some diamonds, it gives me a first indication that maybe these suits are valuable. This is the fundamental 
mechanics of trading by itself. If you see a lot of people wanting to buy something in the market, it very likely means that this something is valuable inherently. This is the principle of scarcity, this is the principle of trading. So I already have some informations that these two suits could be extremely valuable. In fact, I don't want to get too fast into this reasoning because I might be completely wrong here, but I see that I have a lot of clubs in my hand, which makes me think, all right, what is more likely? Is it more likely that clubs is the common suit given that I have a lot of clubs in my hand, or is it less likely that clubs is the common suit? That's important because the target suit is the opposite of the common suit. So if I can figure out that logic, then I can figure out, uh, well, what to do about it. It seems pretty intuitive to me that the more cards I have in a suit, the more evidence I have for this suit to be the common suit. That's just purely mechanical. Um, if I have more of a suit, well, more of this suit called the common suit, I have 12 cards of them overall in the deck, and I already have seven clubs in my hand, it's just more likely that clubs is the common suit with 12 cards in total, rather than, for instance, eight cards being one of the other suits. The suit that has only eight cards, which is one of the other suits, well, it's likely not clubs, because it would, it would be much harder for me, probabilistically speaking, it would be much harder for me to have seven clubs, given that clubs is the club that has eight clubs in total in the game, than seven clubs, given that clubs is the common suit that has 12 clubs in the game. So there we go. We haven't even started the game, and we are already <laughs> starting to link that to probabilistic, uh, probabilistic thinking, uh, Bayesian thinking, because in some way we have some prior evidence that you know that something is a common suit or not, or that you know something is a, another suit. So we have some prior evidence um, set around like 25% chances that any suit is the is the common suit. And then we go and update this belief with a little bit of evidence about, first of all, me having some cards confirming or rejecting the idea that a certain suit is the common suit, and then some other indications from the players and their betting patterns that also tells me whether they find something valuable or not. And if I put all of this together, I essentially have the indication that clubs is very likely the the common suit, I don't have any, any spades here, which also makes me think that maybe spade is the target suit, the, the, the goal suit, the one that I'm going to want to accumulate. And on top of that, I have the raccoon here, just essentially saying directly, straight from the onset of the game, that they're willing to purchase some spades. This is a lot of evidence that spade could be the goal suit. So if I'm right in my reasoning, that's probably what I'm going to want to accumulate. But again, I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for a second, see what happens. I don't know, maybe there is some, some other dynamics at play. Maybe, maybe you don't want to reveal too early on what you believe is the goal suit. So maybe you don't want to bet on the actual, actual suit that you want to accumulate at first. So if anything, maybe this raccoon guy betting on spade could be evidence for spade not being the common suit. Could be just like bluffing, essentially. It could just be, be trying to bluff me. So I'm not going to bet on spade. I'm not going to bet on anything. I'm just going to let the game go by. This is what I always do, by the way. When I start playing a game, I, I overthink it. And it's not that useful. You should just like play it. And you should just go ahead and see how people play. But because I'm talking to you guys, and I'm actually just like uh, another thinker in my natural state, here is why I just spent like the last five minutes discussing this. But let's just get into this uh, game. Let's unpause it and let's see what people do. Wow, okay, it's going really fast. Uh, okay, so I, wow, okay. <laughs> so there just was a lot of trade adjustments. Basically people buy, or like people offering different values for their, um, purchase and sells, selling positions. And overall, what happened at the end of the day is that Raccoon engaged in a suit trade, a hard suit trade to be very specific, 
with the Bobcat, um, basically selling some suit, selling some hearts for six. Uh, okay, so I still don't really have a good idea of how much that is. Well, I mean, I know that we have 300 uh, starting hand chips. So basically one fifteenth of, of, of the initial stack was traded here. It doesn't seem to be like a lot of money for this trade, but I, again, I have no idea. So, <laughs> so let's just keep seeing what is happening in this game. Oh wow, okay, so a lot of people want to buy stuff. A lot of people want to buy stuff, but few people want to sell. And that's how you get a spade sell here by Bob Ferret to Bob Raccoon. Bob Raccoon, remember, Bob Raccoon from the beginning thought that spade could be something valuable to purchase. And he actually, well, he actually ended up doing it. <laughs> he actually ended up purchasing the spade. So if he's really trying to fool me into thinking that spade is not the gold suit and he's trying to bluff, but he ends up purchasing it anyway. N now I'm, I'm starting to to think that I was a little bit paranoiac with the bluffing theory, so that Spade could actually be the gold suit here. <laughs> Spade could actually be a valuable suit, suit that I believe should be valuable because of the amount of clubs that I have in my hand and because I see some other people wanting to purchase it. But it's still pretty early, so let's give it a second. Oh wow, wait, sorry. This is the first time I see a 34 um, purchase. All of the all of the trades so far have been in the range between 0 and 10. And here is this guy wanting to... Wait, I'm always getting confused here. Yeah, wanting to sell some diamonds for 34. And that is why you don't have a trade occurring here. You only have one buyer and this one buyer is willing to purchase the diamond for 9. Whereas this seller here, the ferret guy, wants to sell it for 34. So as long as these two people don't find a common ground for the actual final price of the diamond here, they are not going to settle the transactions. So let's just see. <laughs> now I just, just kind of want to see like what happens. Uh, wow, still some diamonds, uh, sorry, some spades happening here. I'm very tempted to buy it because I, I don't know, I just really feel that, that spade is the... Uh, target suit. So if I was to really play this hand, I don't know, I would just buy some spade here. But okay, so no transaction. Wow, another hearts transaction. So someone is really convinced that heart could be a valuable suit and someone is really convinced that heart is not a valuable suit. How can I figure that out based on that? It doesn't really give me a lot of information about, about hearts. But anyway, uh, okay, so this guy wants to buy it pretty low, and this one, this one is offering it pretty low too at four. So neither of them, neither of them has a very strong conviction, I think, about spade being a a suit here. That actually introduced a pretty interesting idea: the idea of the conviction. If you have a trade happening at low prices, it probably means that neither of them have very strong convictions. If you want to buy something at a low price, you probably, you probably don't think that it's very valuable. Just like if you're willing to sell it at a low price, you probably don't, don't think that you're holding something very valuable. But if you, if, if you see trades happening at much higher values, like what we've been seeing with these diamonds here, you have somebody believing that they're buying something at a high price and therefore at a valuable price, and you have somebody willing to sell it at a high price too. So the second idea that I'm going to want to formalize in some way is that trades occurring at low prices are maybe inherently less valuable than trades happening at higher prices. Uh, again, uh, first time playing this game, um, I don't have a very, very, I have some kind of background in trading, but I haven't really formalized this kind of intuitions yet. So I might be saying complete nonsense. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, I'm seeing these, these diamonds just trading for such high values. Um, but it might be conflicting evidence that because I hold a lot of clubs, I have um, Spade as the target suit. So let's see. All right, I'm just going to let the game run for the next 15 seconds, see how it finishes. 
All right, very interesting. So, okay, so Diamond was the goal suit here from the beginning. Diamond was the goal suit. The evidence that I had for... Okay, wait, they're, they're giving some chips. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So, by not playing any hand first, let's talk about that. By not playing any hand, I end up being the last player. I haven't done any trade. And what actually happened is that um, as a tradeless man, I just ended up losing 40 chips. The 40 chips being the 50 chips that I put at the beginning. This is the first trade. And the one diamond that I had from the beginning, which gives me back 10 chips because you accumulate 10 chips for every, um, every card of the gold suit that you have in your hand. So I ended up at 310 chips and this is well lower than than all of my my opponents. We have the Bob Ferret who figured it out, remember the guy was, I think the guy was buying a lot of diamond. So the guy pretty quickly understood that he should, oh no, sorry, the guy had five diamonds from the beginning and didn't do anything. He didn't buy them, didn't sell them. The two guys here did a lot of trading on these diamonds and I basically didn't do any trading on the diamond. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk precisely about how my two first intuitions played that played out. And we're gonna to try to start formalizing it and we're gonna actually start using these intuitions to do some trading and to see how that trading goes.